There we go. Hey, what's up? Hey. Welcome to the 72 PC Podcast, the only podcast where we have technical issues and you have to deal with it. Uh, with us this week, we have my, um, for some reason, OBS. I uh, didn't have my audio device on for some reason, which is odd. But anyways, it's fixed now. What's up, guys? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What What are you wearing? Oh, look at this. Look, look, look. Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, that, I dig it. That looks kind of kind of familiar. It, it looks like we have new merch in the merch shop. You can you can type exclamation point merch in the chat for a link to that, or you can go to uh, acquire.com slash 72 pin connector, but acquire spelled weird. You should just go to our website and click the link. Also got a hoodie. Look at this. Ooh, a hoodie. You keep making oh, me have to go to... Oh, that looks clean. It does. And they, they did a great job with the color gradient and everything. Very nice. nice. <sighs> Dobby, I admit it. The world wasn't ready, but you're going to deal with it. Pony <laughs> Tom. It's Pony no, Tom. I'm never ready for it. Uh, uh, also, you ready for out of context? Baba um, Black Sheep, have you any wool? No. Yes, sir. No. Yes, sir. Three bags full. That's it. <laughs> oh, my God. Phil, I told you it was a fucking childhood rhyme stuck in my head, and I couldn't think of what it was. It was Baba Black Sheep. <laughs> we, ha we have some uh, pre precast <laughs> banter uh, out of context being, being uh, revealed here on, on the cast. So, yeah, that was the thing we were talking about. He, he started saying something. I can't remember why. You started saying that. Uh, to answer yes, sir. And then I just kept going with it. Okay. Because you asked if we were ready and I said yes, sir. That's right. But but <laughs> doesn't matter. Wonderful. Doesn't matter. <laughs> I figured it out. I'm happy now. Yeah. So it's actually been two weeks uh, since the last cast. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if, if anybody noticed. We didn't really announce it or <laughs> let anybody know or anything. We just kind of just kind of didn't do it. Um, but yeah, we're back. It's nice to be back. I was actually looking forward to this because um, even though I was one of the reasons we canceled last week, um, I found myself missing it a little bit. So, yeah. Yeah, and it wasn't just Adam to be fair adam wasn't feeling great but i've been looking for an excuse to cancel a cast one of these weeks so i could try something out in dota <laughs> so it, it's joint air joint yeah. air the but i did try something new out in food oh oh um i mean i tried something new but it's not new it's per se like i i tried to make homemade smash burgers Ooh. hey how'd they turn out um I liked it. Um, I think actually I'm gonna cook them even longer next time though to get them a little crispy on the edges because they're smash burgers. Yeah, they gotta be. Crispy. But like I did the whole I did the whole thing of like putting extra or some cheese on top of them, steaming them to help melt this cheese like really fast, and you stack them in the skillet to melt them all together. Mm. Like it was oh. a sloppy looking mess on toasted buns that was excellent. <laughs> I'm into this. The smash burger is my favorite kind of burger incarnation i i mean i like i mean like the steakhouse style kind of thick burgers those are cool and those can be really good too but i like a really thin crispy hamburger patty um, mm. i think i prefer a big thick patty with a fried egg on top like any kind of fried egg variant of a cheeseburger i'm down with but i do like me smash and i think honestly though cooking at home i like to do smash burgers more they're easier. So, they're a little easier to not fuck up, if that makes sense. Because with a regular burger, if you're too hot, you burn the fuck out of the outside. <laughs> I, am I am I allowed to ask? Uh, Want to smash? I'll smash. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah. Anytime. And then tomorrow night, I am going to be um, going to a Wagyu beef hot pot. Oh, so I'm kind of curious about that because like traditionally I wouldn't a coworker asked me to go. I'm like, okay, I'll go with you. But traditionally, like I'm not a person who thinks that hot pot, you want high quality meats because it's like thinly sliced. You're putting it in hot ass oil. It's not there for the meat, but 
He wanted to go. I'm like, you know what? I'll try it. I'll see if it's actually noticeably better or not. But, and just like hibachis, hot pots are really nice restaurants for COVID era because you have a individual table unto itself that is like segregated from the rest, which is really nice about how they set those up. So, yeah, I'm kind of excited to go try Wagyu beef hot pot. But that should be fun. Yeah, we'll yeah. Possibly tasty. Possibly. Hopefully tasty. I mean, hot pot's always tasty. Hopefully worth the price tasty. Because, uh, that's, yeah. Ooh. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. What about you guys? How's your weeks? Pretty uneventful. Yeah, all same actually. <laughs> yeah, pretty, uh, pr- pretty low key a week, I guess. Not a lot going on. Other nice. than my, I got some new merch in today from us, or not today, but uh, this week, and I think that's about it. How long did that take to get? Uh, a couple weeks, I think. So I actually ordered more things, but they went ahead and shipped these, I guess, because they're ready, and then I'll get the other Ooh. stuff later, which is kind of cool. I like that. And they're I not charging you additional order. shipping? No. Oh, that, that's really nice, because that's not cheap for them to do, because they're on the other side of the pond. Ooh. Yeah, they are. Well. Nice. Canada. Huh? Aren't they Canadian? I thought they were in Europe. No, they're in Canada. Oh, well, in that case, fuck it. That ain't that bad. <laughs> yeah. Some guy brought they're it down just nice. on, on a moose. It's uh, acquire.ca. <laughs> On a moose. Uh, uh, so, I yeah. mean, if we don't have eventful weeks, should we just get straight to the meat and potatoes? Yeah, of this I, wish I, I wish I had some like fun, interesting anecdote or like a new thing I tried or or something. But I, I just got nothing, man. Yeah, same. It's I, not been a bad I week. A new, I just got nothing. I bought a new beer that I almost poured down last night. Like it was. Oh, awful. that bad? I, really? Wow. Yeah. That like sucks. I. I'm someone who typically like I don't like it, but I'll deal with it. Like I tried that. I'm like, this is fucking awful. <laughs> and it's from a company that I typically really like. Oh. It was, was it? Uh, it was a um it was from a Legion. It was a type of IPA. I can't remember exactly what it was. But they they had a pack with their high their hazy IPA, their Imperial IPA, and this other thing. Mm-hmm. And I never had the other thing. I'm like, oh I'm excited. I want to try it. Nope. Fucking awful. <laughs> oh, but when I was at the store, I was gonna say, you know what? Fuck it. I typically don't do this. I'm getting a soda. And I was gonna go there and get me like, you know, a Dr. Pepper or, or like a cherry coke or something, maybe a Mountain Dew. And then I saw a Pepsi. I'm like, that doesn't look normal. Now look closer. There was a fucking mango on the bottle. They're uh, making what? mango Pepsi. What? Ah. Uh, okay. You motherfuckers didn't know that either. I no, I knew no. that. I, I just I had no clue. Did you get one? And yeah, and you know how like with the cherry Coke and like cherry Pepsi even, like the taste blend and it, it's hard to really differentiate the taste of the Coke from the Pepsi. It just kind of tastes collectively as a different flavor. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Dude, with mango Pepsi, you taste fucking mango and you taste fucking Pepsi. Like That's... there is no union of the flavors. Uh, <laughs> and it was very off-putting at first because it is yeah. a strong ass mango flavor. Huh. If if, so, Coke, um, if Coke makes that, I'll try it. But I'm not a big Pepsi fan. But yeah. I like the idea though, because mango is is a top tier fruit. I've got some mango in the fridge. Nice. I think I've told you guys about the mangoes that uh, the street vendor was selling in New York, where like they put fucking chili powder on them. Yeah, that sounds yeah, good. Dude, that, that that is the best way to eat a mango. Do you guys remember? Tom, do it. What? 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 No, I'll just gonna do it. Is Tom's gonna go get a mango. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ten podcast to mango. mango. Do you guys ever? Oh. Ha- do you guys remember the lime Coke? Yeah, yeah that was solid. I liked. That. It was amazing. It was good. Now they um, got coffee. I Coke. actually, I I always keep limes because that is my preferred way to drink Coke. Because I'll slice up some lime, throw oh, it in there. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's a good idea. The you guys coffee Coke Pepsi was Blue? way way better than it should have been. The, yeah, the vanilla one. Oh, vanilla Coke is already like, my favorite. You add a little coffee yeah. in there. Oh my god, what? That's such a good flavor yeah. combo. Oh, yeah. They got Coke coffees. It's like Coca Cola Black or something like that. 
Yes, please. It yes. was weird as shit, but like just it that works. slight sweetness with the coffee. Oh my god, it was. And it's it was it's great. not it's not like coffee and Coke necessarily like half and half mixed. Like it's still mm. it it's still Coke. But there is a little bit of that coffee taste in with it. And it, and it works really well, I think. The flavors work well it, together, especially the vanilla one. Is it yeah. like coffee, like you get in a stout kind of coffee flavor? Or is it like bitter coffee flavor? Um, um, I want to say kind of know. bitter coffee flavor. It's not. I mean, the drink isn't bitter. Yeah. Oh, I'm just going to try it because yeah. that sounds interesting. Yeah. I only had it once, and it was like 15 years ago, so. Oh. What? Okay. Oh, these are the new. The Coke Black. Oh, that was, yeah. I forgot. Or is there that. a different one? Is there a new one? Yeah. Oh, my God. There, there's an actual Coke. Okay, I I will go. Yeah, there's, 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 a, there's, there's Coke with coffee, and then they've got, like, the zero sugar versions, and then they have vanilla, and then a vanilla zero sugar. So vanilla Coke with coffee. Yep. Okay. Is, is it still car? It's still a Coke, still so it's still carbonated. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm intrigued. I will likely try this. Hopefully, it's good. Yeah. And they come yeah, in the, I'm, like I'm the smaller this. cans or whatever. But yeah, it's it's good. I'm a big fan. Hmm. All right. Hey. And well, we did get a little more sidetracked. Good. Hey. <laughs> um. That's what was missing. So, um, games. Um, I'll no. go ahead and kick it off go because it. I've been it. playing a new game that's a sequel to an old game that kind of caught fire in our community. Um, I picked up Monster Hunter Rise. Um, it, right now it's strictly on Switch. Within a year, it's supposed to be, re- or in a year, it's supposed to release on PC. And it's good enough that I will probably buy it again on PC if other people get it so that we can play together because I'm really digging this. Um, They removed some of the hand-holdiness of World while not making it as obscure as the old-school Monster Hunters. So, like, you don't have those green things showing you all over the map where to go for shit, but they actually do show you where the monsters are located on the map, so you don't have to paintball them and watch them forever, which is really nice. Um... They went back to an old Monster Hunter system where, like, there's multiplayer missions and then there's single player missions, and they are not the same thing. Okay. So you could go through your single player campaign and a multiplayer campaign effectively. Hmm. It, it's it's well, it, there's is some tie back, which is interesting, but it's not like the old world where you're going to play through your campaign and cheese it by bringing someone in that's a super high hunter rank. It's yeah. just not going to happen. It's which is kind of cool. in that way, then. Yeah, but I mean, from this may just be me uh, misremembering, but like, there is more fucking monsters in this than there was in World. That's good. Like there, and uh, the Palamutes were a really good addition. So Monster Hunters always had Palicos, which are the cats that would fight with you. Now you have a Palamute, which is a dog. So you'll have a dog and a cat fighting with you on single players. So for okay. hunting purposes it's nice because it gives additional targets for the monster to hunt at or attack but it's also a traversal a traversal tool so you can ride the dog and what it turns into is he sprints and it doesn't cost your stamina which is really nice so you can get around the map really fast that way as well as uh monster hunter rise is a very vertical game so unlike previous Monster Hunters, they allow you to traverse the terrain and get over mountains instead of just around them. Ooh, so the nice. dog helped you do that. And they have this concept of what they're calling a wire bug that lets you just kind of grapple into midair. So it's a really fun um, way to be able to get around and dodge attacks. It makes you feel kind of like a ninja badass, which is fun. But I mean, the game still feels just as good as the world. Like when you pick up your hammer and you just smash an Ange in the fucking face with a hammer, dude, it just feels good. I don't. It's hard. It's weird to say that, but like you feel it when you fucking get that crit hit on that Ange face and he just falls over. <laughs> like you feel that you just broke his skull. It's awesome. 
right. So, so I, you mentioned that they added dogs, and that and that's pretty cool. But most importantly, can you pet the dog? At the end of missions, um, when you succeed, you'll be like, "Good boy," and you'll pet him. Okay. So the dog is getting pet. Have you guys seen that uh, Twitter account? No. It's called yeah. Can You Pet the Dog? And it's literally just, it goes through a bunch of video games. And they'll make a post and it <laughs> says, you cannot pet the dog in Bloodborne. <laughs> or, or, or you can pet the dog in whatever. Or, you know, the, the scheme was updated so that you can now press A to pet the dog. And that's all it is. It's just a bunch what about of them. the division? The, one of the only games where players were actively going around shooting the dogs. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, it's it's really fucking solid. If you're a fan of the Monster Hunter franchise, I would say this is a uh, definitely pick up. If you don't like playing Monster Hunters alone and your friends are PC, wait. It's simple as that. Like, If you don't have the ability or you don't want to buy it twice, wait to play with your friends. It is definitely a game that is made better by playing with people. Going through Monster Hunter World with like the eight of us in here that were all playing it, dude, that was a blast. Yeah. I, I think I'm going to wait until this comes out on PC. Like, I could get it on the Switch today, but frankly, I just don't play games on my Switch anymore. Like, I and I, I think that's uh, an artifact of the, you know, a side effect of me not having a commute anymore. Before, I used to have two hours on a bus, right? What the fuck else am I going to do? So I'd play Switch. a bunch of Switch games. But, uh, you know, now that I'm stuck at home, I look at the Switch, I'm like, well... You see, I could play The Witcher 3 sitting on the couch on this tiny screen running at 540p, or I could just grab my controller, sit on the couch, and play it on the TV on my big-ass gaming PC. Well, you see, I'll still play it on TV. Like, I'm playing Monster Hunter almost primarily on TV with the Pro Controller. Yeah. Yeah, but, like, if if I'm going to, like, I don't want to buy a Switch game, because I, I literally don't even play a dock. Like, I just don't play the Switch anymore, um, which is unfortunate, because I've had a, a Mario game that every time I fire it up, it's, like, the best thing in the world, and oh, my God, I love playing that, but I just don't I play just, it. I just view it like another console. Like, I'll play it at the game I want to play is there. Just yeah. like when Mario Golf comes out, I'll be playing that shit. When the new Mario that- Kart that I've just got too many games going on right now, so I'm trying to focus on a few just to get them out of my queue. So Persona sure. 4, Disco Elysium, um, or something Keep else. telling yourself yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you're, I, Tom only <laughs> focuses on a few. Every fucking week, he has 20 games on his list that he's yeah. put 15 minutes a piece <laughs> into. <laughs> I know. Uh, I love that about you, Tom. <laughs> like, you are the yin to I, my yang. I was looking at... I was looking at control and I'm like, wow, I should really play this again. And I'm like, I'm like a third of the way through. I can finish this out. Nah, but I, I did. I did play a little bit more death stranding this week. Nice. 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 Um, How far are you? Uh, let's see. I just got, I think I got to port not city. Like okay. I'm not, I'm not super far, uh, but I've had a few missions with the bike. I love that nice. thing. Um, <laughs> it's it is great to Skyrim horse up places. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm gonna say, ten out of ten, number one most underrated item is the the fucking climbing gear in Death Stranding. Climbing oh no, gear. you can't you you can't get down this sheer face cliff. Bang! Put a stake in the ground. You have a rope. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just fucking walk. Oh, you need to get back up that place. Well, guess what, bitch. You just put in a rope. <laughs> just climb. Just climb the rope. Climb a little bit. That's it. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm still liking Death Stranding. It's still weird as fuck. Yeah. But uh, I find myself if I if I don't know what to play and I just want to like chill and vibe out, mm-hmm. I'll throw on like something in the background, like a, a sitcom or something, on my other monitor, and then just play through Death Stranding. Or sometimes not even that. Sometimes just chill out and listen to the ambiance of the beautiful environments because that game is goddamn yes. gorgeous. Oh my god, it's so good. Have you have you gotten to the? I kind of forget the the linear path. Um, have you gotten to the weather station yet? Uh, no, I okay. don't think so. Okay. That that aspect of it was kind of cool because once you 
I'm just gonna spoil a little bit, but um, once you get the weather station unlocked, you can actually view on your map. You can toggle to the weather portion, and you can Ooh. see um, like the next hour, hour and a half, or something of where the time fall is on the map, so that oh, you can route wow. around it, or if you want to, or or plan for it. That's great. That's, That's that obnoxious I... shit, right? What? That's the obnoxious shit about the game that no one actually likes playing around, right? The time fall. Um, I, I mean, mean it, it's yeah. it's an obstacle. Yeah, like I I feel like the game would be worse off without it, um, because otherwise it's how do I want to say this? It adds texture to your journey. If you didn't have that, the only things you're fighting against are literally just the environment. It's just fucking rocks and cliffs and bullshit. With the time fall, it brings, you know, package degradation and then you have to find cover at certain spots or uh, it causes ghosts to appear. So then you've got to deal with those. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it makes the game a little bit more uh, intense because um, otherwise, like literally just going on a hike. Mm -hmm. You can, either choose to, you can either choose to trek through it or you can, you know, strategically avoid it by planning your route out ahead of time and using yeah. the weather station and stuff. I mean, nobody likes spikes in floors, but you're still going to have to walk around them in games and they need to be there for hazards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, oh, I'm, I'm right. still liking Death Stranding. Um, I, I just found... Um, another game to add to my chill games repertoire. Oh, yeah? So I've got Death Stranding. Uh, I've got uh, Google Earth VR. And now Microsoft Flight Simulator, because I tried out that VR mode today for like four hours. Oh, oh cool. nice. Did it work pretty well? Um, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <so> it, <laughs> it, works, it works as well as it should. Let me put it that way. So Flight Sim, and, and we talked about this before, it requires a goddamn supercomputer from space yeah. to run the thing like at any reasonable frame rate. So they do have a like VR specific, this is how we tune the rendering engine so you can play it in VR without your computer melting kind of setting. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look bad, but it's definitely not as pretty uh, as the game is normally. Because that game is gorgeous um but even even with the lowered settings yeah you get below 90 fps fairly often like often enough that i kind of had to quit the game because it was getting to be a problem oh. um is that a nice it, way of saying sickness was coming um yeah, a little bit, like, because I've got my, my VRC legs, um, it's not as intense as it normally would be, but if you are new to VR, do not play Flight Simulator. Um, it's just not ready for you, uh, or you're not ready for it. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm mad about that goal. Oh. What was that? <laughs> oh my god. That's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> anyway right. continue uh, talking about so. that i'm going to have to disappear for a second because i have a <laughs> puppy as you probably hear yes please pet the dogs so, for us yeah yeah make Love sure you. to press a <laughs> um so yeah i i fired it up i i took uh a little flight around i went to uh, seattle area tokyo uh hoover dam swung on down by the grand canyon um and it's it's beautiful and <laughs> there is nothing quite like because i was also playing this with a flight stick and throttle so there's nothing quite like flying around banking around curves with the flight stick and uh just looking out the window and being like yeah that's the fucking hoover dam <laughs> um i actually found uh because i had live multiplayer turned on there's somebody going around, I think it's like the Tokyo tree. It's like a, a big ass building. Um, and they were just doing loops around it. And so I followed them and I started curving around it too. And that's it. We just both flew our separate ways. Um, right. So here's the asshole in me. What happens if you go the opposite way around and you go nose to nose? I don't think anything, but I'm not sure. Damn. Uh, so I played with the, uh, the real time, like live weather and traffic data. 
which is really cool. Um, and then I also went uh, and flew around the UK, but I set it to daytime because it's nighttime over there and I didn't want to do night flying. That sucks. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it is a lot of fun. It's uh, honestly just fucking impressive that this works in VR at all. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, as far as performance goes, it's it's a little chunky. Yeah. It's, uh, so, yeah, you're gonna have to be careful with that one. Other than the actual technical performance, how's the VR implementation, like gameplay and you know UI and controls and stuff? The UI is kind of weird um, because it does optionally give you like little helper windows that you can then take your mouse and click on the title bar and like drag them around like you've got a sphere of a viewport mm -hmm. and you can drag it around and they'll stick to like different areas which is kind of weird it doesn't use the tracked motion controllers that i've seen uh but because i was playing with a throttle and flight stick everything just kind of worked with the exception of my flight stick not having enough buttons um so that's pretty common especially with a game like flight sim where it, ne it needs like three and a half keyboards for every function. Um, so yeah, I, I ended up sitting the keyboard on like a tray table to my side and then I've got the flight stick in front of me and then I've got the mouse over here. Like it's it's a whole thing. Oh, it did take mouse too? Yeah. Oh, that would be... <laughs> <laughs> it's be it's a little annoying, but the index's camera mode means that I wasn't too far away from a keyboard or mouse uh, at any time. Is good. Huh. So, so did you go to the uh, Suez Canal and see the ship? I did not. I should have. Because <laughs> oh, I man. did see, um, I don't think we have it in our news, I did see that that was actually in Flight Sim. Oh, was it? <laughs> because they use like almost, I don't want to say real time, but they use highly updated satellite images. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I bet that was the most visited location, at least for a <laughs> oh, week. I, I hope <laughs> they have stats on that because I guaranteed it was. Uh, uh, that's well, funny. I enjoy that. So, Adam, you yeah. played a new old game. I did play a new old game, and it has sucked me into the point of that's almost the only thing I've played this week. Um, I've been playing uh, the new DLC... The Binding of Isaac Repentance, uh, the, I think, third DLC after Rebirth. Um, anybody not familiar with the game, you probably haven't listened to this podcast a whole lot because uh, we, we have a tendency to, to talk about it. Um, not, we, not as much as Dark Souls, love... but, you know, it's um, an but old This staple. is probably one of the few games we all hot hold in very high regard. Mm. Yeah. Well, Tom, did you play much of it? I don't recall. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I didn't get into it the same time you guys did, but oh, when okay. the Switch first launched, I bought it there, and that's kind of where I I, see. I got okay. into it. Um, but no, I've been I've been playing this a lot this week. I looked at Steam earlier. I played it um, over twenty four hours this week. Oof! So I put in some grind. Uh, the Binding of Isaac is a roguelike, um, kind of kind of visually similar to. Uh, I don't know, like the old Zelda games in perspective a little bit, like the OG old school Zelda games. Pop down. Yeah, uh, it's it's got a, a super dark narrative ish thing to it, and really good world building and, and environment and monster design stuff. But uh, but yeah, the new update came out this week, and it added a ton of stuff. Um, it, it added so much more stuff and, and little tweaks and things. It actually feels kind of like a sequel, almost. Well, it's um, visually prettier in a lot of spots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they added... I believe it's over like 130 new items, bringing the item total over 700 items in this game. They added 25 plus new bosses. They added uh, two advertised new characters and some uh, unlockable alternate versions of existing characters. So 
what is essentially 19 characters. <laughs> yeah, um, it's... There's like whole alternate pathways leading to a new final, final boss segment. Um, it, it's not it's not a linear roguelike. There are multiple ending paths you can take with multiple ending uh, spots to, to end a run. So I love that you have the variety in in which which pathways you want to take, and they added even more for this one. Yeah, I, I've always appreciated the there is no you beat the game this run. Like, this is, Ooh. like, the game. Like, I really yeah. loved, like, even in, before this, what, there was probably, like, seven different ways you can end the game? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Something like so that. So adding to that pool is really cool. Yeah, and, and the, the way they do all the item unlocks and stuff is is perfect for this. I mean, so you have the original, I don't know, seven-ish ways to end the game. And for each character, you have a little post-it note on your character select screen that shows little icons for which endings you've done with that character. And, of course, each one unlocks a different item. So you've always got something to work towards um, and, and always something to do. E- even aside from those those post-it notes to fill out i mean you have items that only unlock under certain conditions when you've done this thing so many times there are separate challenge modes that unlock items i mean there's just there's just so much to do and i'm really falling back into that grind uh of of doing this stuff because of all the new things they added um, so my only gripe I've ever had with Isaac is it falls into this category of game where you can get either the God run, mm-hmm. but you can also get runs where after 30 minutes, you stop getting items that are effective for you and your runs dead through no fault of your own. I mean, granted, if you're a God tier player, you'll still be able to possibly do it. But like sometimes those items, man, you get fucked. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that happened to me uh, today, actually. So I'm playing as a character that has an an active item. You can only hold one active item at a time. It's something that you can activate with a button uh, once it's charged up or whatever. And the character I was playing is Isaac, and his is a D6. So uh, every single floor has an item room with a, a fancy new item you can collect. And his d6 allows him to re-roll that to a different item so if i get into an item room i don't like that item i'm going to re-roll it and see if i can get something better so i i get to my item room it's an active item which means i can't take it without losing that d6 which is a super useful item to have like the whole game because you have all these you know re-roll chances to get better items than what initially spawned so i was like ah crap the first one's an active item Uh, i don't want to take that because i need this other one basically uh completely wasted item room so i get my d6 charged up i re-roll that item into another active item whatever i i I lose out on the item floor this or the item room this floor just move on to the next floor maybe i'll get something better uh so i fight the boss of that floor he drops an active item i go down to the floor to the next floor i get to the item room it's an active item i re-roll that item it's an active item (laughs) <laughs> I'm like Jesus, man. Just give me that's something I can just, use. Just quit your run. That's just that's when you just quit the run. Give me something I can use. There are only so many opportunities to get items to get your character beefed up enough that you can handle the in-game stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so so well, yeah. I mean, th- there are times where you get a really really good combination. The RNG is in your favor. You have all these items that are just great. They all work together, and you can just steamroll the run. And then there are times where you don't get so so lucky and you have to really try to salvage something out of nothing or just really be super good at not getting hit by bullet hell bosses. <laughs> and and I, I want to call out, um, yeah. I watched Adam play one of the new bosses, one of the end or more of the endish new bosses. Holy fuck, dude. That is uh, some of the yeah. most brutal shit I have seen in Isaac. <laughs> Yeah, it gets pretty nutty. Um, but I, I will say they did a lot of item rebalancing and stuff. And as a whole, the game is harder. Like, across the board. Ooh. It is less likely that you're going to get just like one or two items. 
that completely make you steamroll the game. Did just, they take Grimst or Brim uh, Brimstone and weaken that at all? Yes. Okay. Like I say, because that item in particular was always like yeah. the one dev devil room item you always got if it was there. You never pass Brimstone. Well, I shouldn't say that. you hardly ever do because it was just so strong. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, we hard did across try the board. Multiplayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so um, they implemented a multiplayer, a proper one. They used to have one where the person would be a ghost and it was really shitty. Now they get an actual full on character. But rather than letting the user set up a server on their own computer and people connect, like, you know, Risk of Rain and all those games do, they rely on Steam, uh, the Steam um, streaming. For multiplayer, it is not great. It, it's kind of uh, laggy. It's not the worst. I mean, I was able to play, but it is definitely noticeably laggy. You would probably have a Where really I hard wish... time in, on the end game bosses and stuff like that. Yeah, they're playing that last boss that you were against. Like there was no way. And all they have to—I should say—all they have to do is there'd still be some lag there, but like. Let me host a server. Let my game st spawn up a server. I understand the game wasn't built for it, so it doesn't have the infrastructure to do it, blah, 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 but damn, um, man. I I was reading some Reddit posts, and somebody data mined that there is actually a online co-op client code and stuff in place that's what? so far unfinished. I think they're working Ooh. on it, as far as I know. Um, Dude. The, the poster on Reddit... Got it working, and it's a little buggy or whatever. But like he got it working with a mod, so that might be coming. Ooh. That would be awesome. That would be so amazing. So it's four player co op too. Yeah, which is an insane amount of players. Like I can't imagine if they scale that up with four players. Holy hell! I I'd imagine they probably don't scale it, but. You're going to have to get a lot fewer items per character because there are only so many item drops per floor. But they still do, like, every boss still drops an item for everyone. Oh, that's right, yeah. I wonder how that works. So, I don't what know. if they do, uh, like, health scaling or something on the enemies? Make them sure look. That, yeah, that, that would work. I haven't played enough of it to really tell how they balance it. Yeah. But yeah, I I did a little bit of it. I I really dug it. I instantly fell into some of the new stuff, which was cool. Like it's not just end game new stuff. Like they added new stuff all through yeah. the game. Yeah, a lot of the enemy variants and stuff like that you'll you'll run into before you get through the end game content. There there is a lot. Uh, I will say is a ton of it is locked behind basically beating the previous DLC's final boss, uh, or. Not final boss, but the newest boss. You have to beat him three yeah. times to unlock the whole alternate path stuff, which then unlocks, you know, most of the new areas and floors and a lot of the new bosses and end game content. But, but yeah, even if you don't do that, you're still gonna run into, you know, new items, new enemies. They polished up a lot of the sprites and animations. Um, they, they, all the rebalancing, of course, item rebalancing and stuff. So there, there's a lot of new stuff there either way. It's been really, really fun, though. And they're forcing you to kind of get good because it's harder now. Yes. Uh, before, there's so you can run on normal or you can run hard mode, which is like it kind of decreases the amount of uh, consumable items that gets picked up. I'm sure your luck is lower. The enemies are harder, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, if you were experienced in the game and you played it a bunch, normal was you could pretty much get through most of the time and then hard mode basically turned into your old normal mode like you just play hard mode all the time because you're good enough to deal with it uh hard yeah. mode is now legitimately hard um Ooh. even normal runs i don't always get through so they, they definitely increase okay. the difficulty which is it's good i think it, it forces you to actually 
play mechanically. You can't just rely on items to basically negate your need to dodge bullets and stuff because everything just dies so quickly you never have to actually deal with their attacks. Um, I, I think it's more likely that you actually have to play well mechanically and not take damage and dodge bullets properly, land your shots, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Which is good. Uh, that that Because yeah. on the really, really good Isaac runs, like that was why I was good on those because I didn't have to dodge. Yeah. Not not that you can't still do that occasionally. Like if you get just a super lucky string of items that all work together, you, you can you can still steamroll. But you know you gotta yeah. be a little more careful this time. So Dobby did bring up a question I thought was interesting. It's the idea of like, so there's probably two games that come to mind. But like recently, has any game formed the genre it's a part of more? Like PUBG definitely, because PUBG really like yeah. created its own genre. But like outside of PUBG. Um, like Isaac, it, Binding of Isaac is just, I think, well known as like roguelike gold. Like, this is what you play. You got to play this. Um, I would argue certainly one that, of the early adopters. Or, or... Yeah, it's it's like a modern progenitor of, of the roguelike genre. I, I am going to flippantly say, though, that probably the thing that contributed the most to the roguelike genre was rogue <laughs> yeah. well, he's saying modern though like <laughs> yeah sure that's like yeah, saying the, that rogue, like it some doesn't actually shitty shooter on the nes was what was fundamental <laughs> for all first person shooters get yeah. out of here with that oh by the way we're uh anybody in chat we're talking about the binding of isaac um but no rogue was wasn't that like a text game text no no it was or am i uh, thinking of Something it was else. ASCII, but it was a an ASCII dungeon crawler, basically. Okay, but it still plays fundament, fundamentally different. Like, the kind of rules of the game are yeah. similar in structure, it's, but, like, mechanically, more, it really plays out way different. Yeah, it's more mechanically similar to, like, a uh, computer RPG, like an old-school CRPG. Okay. okay. Which I think it, you'd be hard to find, like, yeah, Binding of Isaac, yeah, PUBG that are like really genre defining. Honestly, Dark Souls. Dark Souls. <laughs> like Dark Ninja Guy. Eric brought I, I, up I, I, Dark I Souls. Little, I, I was a little reluctant, but I was like, eh, Ninja Guy's even further back, so I'll give it to Souls. Um Half Life. I won't I won't call out COD 4 because while that was a big popular game, I mean like you're on the heels of Halo 2 and Halo 1. It's not yeah. like it revolutionized the genre. Um, I'd, I'd say Half-Life, um, cause Half-Life basically made mainstream the idea that shooters didn't need to be a loose collection of, uh, completely disconnected levels, right? You had your Wolfensteins, your Dooms, your Quakes, and they were all just very arcadey. Here is a situation, here's your guns, go do a thing. And Half-Life was very much you're this person in this area and here's your entire linear storyline through line of the entire game. So it was but what other games, what other games do that now though? That aren't, I mean, literally every shooter except for the boomer shooters now have a linear through line. Right. And I mean, in a connected story in place, like even doom eternal, it is one contiguous space that you're fighting in typically right where where you're being led through from one okay. like facility to the next what year did instead of just completely out? disconnected levels 1998 okay okay then yeah okay I, I, I can give you the nod there awesome give me one sec anyway um moving on uh what else was there um tom did you have anything else new yeah um I did a little bit more Beat Saber grind. Um, not really much to talk about there. I'm finding harder songs, which is cool. Um, Pavlov is still a vibe. Um, there's now like two, yeah, basically two servers that I hang around in, um, which is great because I'm always playing with the same people. So last night I jump on and uh, a couple people are like, oh shit, Tom's here. And like other people are like, oh fuck, well, 
this means we have to balance the teams in this way. And like, people are like actively changing teams because we all know each other's relative skill level, but they're balancing the team. So everybody has a really good game and we can have really close matchups instead of stomping. Um, and it's been, it's been a very long time. I'm thinking like the last time this happened for me was in like the CS source days <laughs> of having like the one server that the community kind of rallies around or a small group of the community rallies around. Um, and it's nice to just be able to play with regulars now. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of chill. It's great. Um, so yeah, playing a little bit of Pavlov, I feel like I'm actually getting better. Um, like not even just mechanically, but tactics, awareness, where people are uh, are gonna be popping around from. Um, yeah, it's it's just fun. I'm tryharding at Pavlov, and I'm loving it. Are you, are you um, gonna get a uh, <laughs> a stock, a gun stock? You know. Attachment? I've thought about it, but I don't think so. At least, like, mechanically, I am just now getting to the point where I'm a little bit more than competent, uh, but I don't think a stock would elevate me. I, I think I've got a lot more room for improvement before I get to the additional hardware uh, <laughs> you know, type type solutions. Um, also played a, uh, a new shooter, which I've talked about before, but Hyper Dash. Um, Played that with uh, with Magic Dave actually, and it was fucking great. Uh, it it plays like I don't even like kind of the game modes of TF2. I want to say so you've got control point, you've got payload, um, but the gameplay and gunplay isn't like Pavlov. It's not Counter Strike. It's very arcadey, um, but not so arcadey that it feels shitty in VR. It's kind of fun, uh, and also there's a shit ton of people playing it all the time uh, because it's cross-play with the Oculus Quest, so you've got a built-in player base right there, which is really nice to have in a VR shooter, or really any VR game. Um, yeah. Let's see. The only other thing I really wanted to talk about was Disco Elysium. It is a really fucking weird RPG. Really weird. Um... I, so, hmm. aspects <laughs> of your character's personality are actually characters in and of themselves. So, you will have dice checks that go against your gut instinct or encyclopedic knowledge or um, empathy. And if you, like, pass or fail them, it determines what your character, like, is aware of or what they know, like if you always roll really high encyclopedic knowledge checks, you know all the raw facts about the world that you can get your hands on. Um, but my character is also kind of a dumbass when it comes to emotional intelligence. So it's like, hey, is this person lying to you? And your character, which is actually has a, or your uh, personality, which actually has several different voice actors, uh, de like determined on what aspect of the personality you're, uh, you're being talked to from um, will say things like, oh, no, he's definitely telling you the complete truth. 100 percent. Don't even worry about it. Um, and you don't know if like your your gut instinct is being a sarcastic asshole or, or if it's actually working. Um, it's really interesting. The game is weird as fuck. Uh, and it's got possibly the best opening, to, like the best cold opening to an RPG I've played since Final Fantasy VII. Um, you start out in a big black void of nothingness and you can literally tell the game, oh yeah, give me this non-existentialism. This is what I need. I don't want to exist anymore. Uh, and the game leans in hard to it and it's just fucking great. Awesome writing. Everything is voice acted. Uh, and it is just fucking weird. I've heard I really, know it, really uh, good things about the writing of that game. It's... It's excellent, and it's fucking laugh out loud funny at points. <laughs> um, and the game will intelligently react to the dialogue choices you're making. Usually in RPGs, I run into this issue where I'm playing the fucking paladin, good guy, force of righteousness. I don't want to be rude to anybody, but Disco Elysium doesn't give you the option to really play like that. Or it gives you enough options to go off the fucking rails and be weird as shit that I don't feel the need to play like a, a typical standard 
every man good guy hero's journey type archetype. Uh, instead, I have decided to lean into my, well, I'm a superstar cop, and uh, and clearly I'm better than everyone at everything all the time. So my guy is has the emotional intelligence of like a rodent, um, <laughs> but he's a like idiot savant genius and encyclopedic knowledge and generally pisses off everyone he meets. Uh, and he's just kind of a dumbass most of the time. And it's great. Um, the game will also look at certain choices you're making, uh, like politically. Um, and the, due to the way I've been answering the questions, my subconscious piped up and it said, Hey, sounds like you want to bring back the USSR. I'm like, what? It's like, you can't stop this. You know, you want to, you want to get communism back on the table. Would you like to start that political quest? And depending on how you answer, like there's various aspects of like a political spectrum that you can talk to certain characters about and explore and uh, shape the world that way. Um, so yeah, my character is now uh, a temporary amnesiatic superstar cop who's an idiot uh, who wants to bring back communism. Nice. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Oh, it's you as a cop. <laughs> yeah, it's me as a cop. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, fun Hi. fact, Irk. Um, uh, the guitarist Mark in the band Periphery voice acted one of the characters in that game. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Uh, yeah, Periphery. Disco Elysium feels more like um, more like reading a novel than playing a game. There's no combat that I've seen. Everything is done with like dice rolls and skill checks. Um, but oh my god, the writing and the voice acting is top fucking notch. That's cool. Is it? You know what? Uh, oh, go ahead. If somebody doesn't care for RPG gameplay, would, could they still enjoy it on story alone? So that's it. Yeah, that's the thing. It's basically only story. There's no real. I don't want to say that there's no real gameplay, but there's no real gameplay. Like, you get certain equipment which will buff certain aspects of your character's personality. Like, if you wear, like, a suit and tie, people are going to respect you more because you don't look like a disgusting slob. <laughs> if you walk around in rain boots with no pants on, which you can do, uh, then people are going to treat you kind of like your guy walking around with rain boots and no pants. <laughs> um, but, like, there's no random battles, there's no encounters, there's no anything. It's a very play-it-straight... I don't even want to call it normal because that's not it, but it's basically the gameplay is just dialogue. It's just talking to people and walking around and clicking on some interactables, right? Like browsing shelves in a store or looking for clues because you are a detective, you're a police officer, you're trying to solve a murder case. Um, but it's kind of like that adventure game sort of gameplay um, and not much else. So if you want a game to just like sit back, vibe out, enjoy the writing, get a good story and not have to really do anything mechanically intense. Yeah. Disco Elysium works great. And it now has full controller support. A game like that sounds like they probably should have been able to have full controller support from the start. Uh, it's also an extreme. It's made by a very small studio, like teeny, 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 tiny. Okay. I like oh, that. that makes sense. It's cool that a tiny studio actually have has all voice acted and good writing and stuff. Like having full voice actors and stuff is is cool for that. Yeah, and I like I'm less than ten hours in, right? But so far, yeah, this is the best games writing I've ever seen, ever. Oh, um, so so one of one of the um. My phone is going crazy. Uh, one of the more uh, pretentious art housey uh, game critics that I watch and listen to a lot uh, said that, yeah, Disco Elysium is basically the next great contemporary American novel, but as a video game. Hmm. Like they're fucking comparing it to like classical literary <laughs> figures and how, how well it's put together. Oh. Yeah. You have my interest peaked. 
Yeah, it's... Oh, and uh, if you had Disco Elysium on Steam before, uh, yeah, you automatically get, like, this massive update that adds controller support, better voice acting. Uh, like, you basically get the Ultimate Edition for free. That's a nice little thing. Yeah. But yeah, I'm that's, I'm that's I all I actually look into it. It's weird as fuck. It is weird as fuck. But I like weird. it is also one of the only games where I, I literally, this morning, I was playing the game, and I was laughing so hard, I had to grab a tissue and start wiping the tears off of my <laughs> face because it was so goddamn hilarious. That's awesome. Um, it's goddamn shopkeepers and like a like the Bermuda Triangle of retail where you know all these businesses go and they always cycle through in six months. And she's like, No, I'm not cursed. Every I just have better business sense than everyone else. We'll be fine. And then anytime you try to buy something, she's like, Oh yeah, well, this book is great if you know you don't have any imagination and you want everything spoon fed to you. But you're not one of those type of people, right? Like, she actively discourages you from buying everything in her shop because she's kind of a fucking idiot. And when you point that out, she's like, yeah, I've been told I'm kind of a fucking idiot. And I got, I fucking lost it. I fucking lost it. It was great. <laughs> uh, yeah, if, if you try it out, let me know. Yeah, I will. I will let you know. Moving what on. Um, so I'm going to get this out of the way right now. Uh, Dota had a monster or I say monster, but it was actually a pretty big update. Uh, new hero introduced Don hammer, Don hammer, Don hammer. I think, um, map change. Uh, the map change is fairly substantial. I mean, if you know how to play Dota, it's not going to be like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but there's been one camp removed from the jungle. One camp removed from the triangle. The outpost has moved to a more central location. The runes don't spawn the same way they used to. There's only one bounty rune per side now after the start. Like, there's a lot of small changes they did. And then a decent amount of rebalancing on some items. Um, I mean, it's so early. No one knows what the meta is going to be. So there, I have no takeaways to really give anyone at this point. The new hero, though, is kind of cool. And sh the, the big shocker of it all, she wasn't in the anime. Like, everyone was thinking it was going to be some of these anime characters are going to be the new character. Nope. It's this chick with a big-ass hammer that looks like a god. And she hits like a fucking tank. She has some cool healing abilities. She is Thor meets Omni Knight. So, um, I actually have a, a potential answer to why it wasn't one of the anime characters. So, this hero was supposed to come out pre-COVID. It was supposed to come out during one of the in-person majors. So they already had it ready um, and it just got delayed because COVID fucked everything up. Uh, so that's why Valve launched it now. I mean, that would make sense if they hadn't already released another character since COVID. Yeah, that's true. Fucking like Hoodwink. If, they just released Hoodwink in November and there's supposed to be three more characters I think this year. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. But I, that's all I'm going to say about it. Um, it's We're still figuring it out, but map change is nice. It's fresh. The map has some new routes, which is cool. So, yeah. Um, Rocket League had an update. Season 3 started. Um, they added some quality of life. That's nice, but yeah, not a whole lot there. Um, though, for all you in the Rocket League community from around us, which is pretty much everyone, um, our um, friend Jake, Jake from State Farm, or now Agent Jake, um, has been hosting weekly events um, on Saturday mornings. They all have at least a $500 prize pool for you to enter. Go there. And for all of you like, well, I'm not that good. I'm not going to be able to beat an SSL. True. But today's event, 1v1 Boomer Rumble. So, unlimited boost, the ball has maximum bounce, and it's fucking rumble. Anyone can win that shit. <laughs> so, he's, he's having some fun with it. He's been having a lot of fucking luck, or a lot, a lot, a lot of fun, a lot of good turnout. Um, he's uh, hit partnered, so go check it out. It's good shit. Go support him. Um, he's been around our community for a long time. Hell, he's been on the podcast a few times. So, jump on there. It's um, good free events. They're fun. I've been in a few of them. Um, 
then yeah. Uh, I, that's all I really got. You guys have any other games? I actually played... I, I know it's dumb because we're playing it right now, but I actually played Rocket League this week. Oh? Not, not just on the podcast. Like, I actually played ranked games, and I played enough ranked Ooh. games to actually get placed. And Oh, nice. I, I had realized... Um, I didn't play ranked last season at all. Yeah. I, I realized after the season switched, like, I don't have any of the season rewards whatsoever. I literally forgot to play ranked the whole season. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, I, I actually played some ranked, and I played with an old friend. He used to be around a lot here. Uh, played a lot of Rocket League back in the day with Maldini. Oh, good. Got some games in with you Maldini. Yeah, them. Maldini nice. and Flubber. Uh, we, we did a bunch of ranked games and had a good time. Where'd you come in? Uh, C3. Or, uh, low C3. Nice. nice. So you'll yeah. be in that GC. I think they lowered... I heard they lowered the MMR threshold for GC just a little bit this year. Or this they lowered or every rank by 100. Yeah. Which is weird. Because effectively that means nothing. It just makes people feel better because they're getting a higher rank, but in reality, they're still sitting the same exact place they were in the pecking order. Yeah. I mean, it just might be... I mean, they're probably just tweaking where they want... Like, how many percent... What percentage of players do they want to have this rank? And yeah. Look I mean, at that's why they're... Look at last season statistics. Here's where most player most players are. Let's adjust it, you know, up or down accordingly. They probably didn't have... Effectively like we've all kind of been thinking and everything like SSL is supposed to be top 500 effectively. Mm -hmm. So I oh, think that it? maybe not enough people were getting in there. Like that's kind of, the well, they did, that's the only one they didn't change. I they think. didn't adjust that one. Yeah. Huh? In that case, fuck. Get everyone in GC. <laughs> yeah. It'd be season three all over again. Hell yeah. Actual season Speaking three. Up. It's season three now, but yeah. The, the the earlier season three back in the old days old world rocket yeah, league I, I still think them restarting the numbering system was idiotic <laughs> yeah it's that's a little weird like i get wanting to have a fresh start but you don't need to like start everything over to do that apparently they did yeah deal with it fuck you epic oh shit sorry <laughs> Um, so I, I did see I did see a game in Adam's list. I, I don't know how much time you put into it. <laughs> Not a lot. I'll, I'll be honest. Okay. So actually, this last week I haven't played any VR because wow. I've just been I've just been Binding of Isaac. That's that's it. That's all I've played really, and a little bit of Rocket League and keeping up my Tarkov, not gameplay stuff. Um. <laughs> So no, I didn't get much time in Half-Life Alex. I played a little bit last week. Um, I think I'm a total of maybe three hours in. Um, to give you an idea of where specifically I am, I just got the shotgun. Okay. So that's how far I am. And it, it's Didn't really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love... I, I mean, really, the game is just really, really good. It, it's, it's a perfect game to show what VR is kind of capable of and you know what you can get out of VR that you can't get on just a, a standard format. They do a good job of, of having those mechanics, but not making it feel dumb and gimmicky. Like it just feels immersive. E even something as little as, you know, the head crab lunging at me makes me physically kind of recoil a little bit and feel <laughs> uncomfortable because you're immersed in the world. You're inside the world um, I mean, yeah, you can get jump scared by anything in in games or whatever, but like that actually felt <laughs> like I felt like I was physically threatened a little bit, just because you get immersed and you kind of forget. Which but is no, good. I'm, I'm loving like it so far. It, it's really really good. I, I fully intend on playing more of that, but I'm just a little there's, preoccupied. There's one level that I'm waiting for you to get through, and it's not the one that you've already seen. Yeah, it's uh, not. It's I, it's I one think of the I know. Yeah, I think I know. What you're, not yeah, yeah. 
I, I remember you showing me, I think, one of the music tracks to that part. I'm assuming that part is what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, I've been, I've actually been looking forward to that the whole time. Like, I really can't wait to get to that part because <laughs> I, I have a feeling just based on the very little you said and then the music I heard, I'm going to love it. So, yeah, I can't wait to get there. It's trippy as fuck. I love things that are trippy. Yeah, you'll you'll like this. It's um I I almost want to say like control vibes. Oh, that that's sort of, yeah. Not really but different. Yeah. Yeah. You had a control. Sound, yeah, that's control is the the control vibes as far as the <laughs> the aesthetic and kind of world and and mood and everything like that is a thousand percent up my alley. So yeah, mm. I'm I'm looking forward. Looking forward to it. Other right. than Half Life, Alex, um, I don't think I've played anything. Um, after that, I think that's my list. Yeah, well then, that's my list. Three whole games in two weeks. Shall we move into um, our short stack of news? I guess let's do the short stack of news. It looks so, like a mighty uh, Tom, short stack. Yeah. So Tom's favorite company was given an exploit two years ago that someone had found. And lo and behold, that exploit still exists today. And they are effectively been given a gag order not to talk about it. Yeah. Valve, looking at you. So this one's actually super, super dangerous. And it's been disclosed without being disclosed. Like they didn't legally tell how to do this exploit but they did legally say hey this thing exists uh so hopefully that's not disclosure the reason they're not disclosing is because valve has a bug bounty which is great unfortunately it seems that valve has been completely ignoring all the security researchers trying to help them you know protect people using their products namely steam um so yeah, Steam invites. You know how how we all went to the message and clicked play Rocket League when you invited us and, and launched the game and got us into a party. Yeah, that's that's got a uh, a zero day remote code execution, so anybody could send you anything, um, and launch applications on your computer. So the the little demo they showed on Twitter was they clicked a uh, a link for I think it was Counter Strike. Um, yeah. And it opened up calc.exe on the person's computer, uh, it, which is typically like, you're like, oh, well, so the fuck what? It opened up calculator. Yeah, that's that's the proof of concept. You usually open up calculator uh, to prove that, hey, look, I can open up things on your computer. Um, what this means and what an attacker could do with it is if they wanted to say, you know, run a malicious application or run something to, you know, take all of your personal information and upload it or uh, install a rootkit or spy on you. Um, because it's remote code execution, they can do literally all of that and more. Uh, so yeah, Valve has been sitting on this for two whole fucking years. Uh, and apparently, according to other security researchers familiar with working with Valve's bug bounty program, uh, they do this a lot. There's actually, when I was looking up this story in particular, there were several news items from 2018 and 2019 where they were doing this exact same thing to a different researcher. So, yeah, that that's fucking shady. They, they got to fix this shit. Security is uh, priority zero, especially yeah. this kind of security. Like you're not talking someone loses their items. You're talking about like literally anything on that person's computer. Yeah. Like if you do your personal banking, they can have all sorts of shit on your computer checking your shit. Yep. So yeah, and if people if people look and they say, Oh, well, I can't have Steam installed because I'll get hacked. Um yeah, they're gonna not have Steam installed. Right. There's there's competition now. There are other stores out there. And if Steam becomes a dangerous piece of software to have installed, well, that could be bad for Valve. Real bad for Valve. I mean, Epic's going the hard way of getting all these free games that they're paying a fuck ton of money for. In reality, all they have to do is, hey, address security flaws. Yeah. Which they so haven't had a super that great doesn't track compromise record of, by the way. <laughs> huh? Which is uh, uh, Epic is not does not have a super awesome track record with that anyway. So, yeah. so getting breached isn't quite I, the same yeah, thing. Yeah, like, 
Yeah. No. Like getting breached happens. It sucks. You want to do everything you can in your power not to, but most companies, I shouldn't say most, but in general, breaches happen. What's not acceptable is knowing of this kind of issue for two years and not doing something about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like security isn't binary. There's no way to say this is secure or this is not secure. It's all fucking shades of gray, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's all how likely is this thing to get breached or how hard is it for this thing to get breached? Uh, a, you know, remote code execution, that's a super fucking serious issue. And if you're not fixing it immediately, there's something wrong. If you're not fixing it for two years, it gets into like fucking criminal negligence territory. I mean, it's not like they were releasing games, what they did artifact. I mean, what they probably put 10 man hours on that game. I mean, come on, what the fuck are you doing? Uh, Half-Life. They did Half-Life. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So they had an actual game develop. Yeah. But I mean, either way, you... Oh, my God, Eric. Either way, you get my point. Like, what the fuck, Valve? You're not doing that much. Uh, you probably are, but you're not. Anyway, moving on. Uh, v, 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 v. Gets an update to fix some bugs. Gets 60 FPS. Uh, for those of you not familiar... It is actually a really fucking cool um, platformer that is brutally difficult. Um, it rose in the era of Xbox Live Arcade, and it's it's a really good platform. Um, I don't think it needed 60, but hell, give it 60. <laughs> you don't think it needed yeah, 60? I, Every game needs 60, at least. I mostly, put, I mostly put the story in because that game's like, what, over 10 years old? Oh, dude, it's... Yeah, Maybe well 14, over 10. 14? And yeah, the, the dev is still adding patches and shit. Uh, I believe with the help of the community, too, because if I remember correctly, this game went open source. So, Oh, nice. Yeah, this is really, really fucking cool. That's um, nice. You love to see that, especially from yeah. really long, like old games. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. It's kind of actually, it's kind it, of pretty similar to what happened with Binding of Isaac. Oh, yeah. That game's like the first iteration of that game was like ten years ago, I think, and then this yeah. actually this most recent update was basically a fan mod plus a bunch of stuff because fans made this mod for like two years, and it was so like consistent with the vision of the game. The devs were like, "Hey, why don't you just work for us, and we'll officially put all this stuff in the game and tweak it and add a whole bunch of extra stuff too." I love when people do that. It's, it's so good. Dev houses do that. Yeah. Also, it's it's Edmund McMillan. Like, yeah. You can't hate the guy, <laughs> dude. He's if crazy. you don't follow him on Twitter, he's a great follow, and not because yeah. he's a game dev, but because he'll do these random. You know what? I got 15 minutes before I go to bed. Yeah. We're doing a 15 minute AMA, and the dude goes off the deep end on a lot of shit, <laughs> not game related, and it is so fun. Yeah, it is so fucking fun to read those. I yeah, he's got a good account. Account. yeah, VVV um, getting a whole bunch of support late years later. Awesome. Love to see it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they'll pull also, a Tarari uh, and do a content update. That'd be nice. Um Monster Hunter Rise surpasses five million units sold globally. Dude, wait That's till it's it. Japan. Well, and you have to think. World was the West success. Monster Hunter's yeah. always been a big title. It's been niche in the West. World made it a household name for anyone playing games. And now it's on the Switch. Probably the biggest console right now. So, of course, it sells well. I think it gets to PC. It's going to probably add 3, 4 million units to that. Yeah, easily. This this game's going to sell a lot. This game's going to make them a lot of money. And that good. Because that means they're going to keep making these. Because I love these games. Keep making these games. Oh, speaking of making money, um, I didn't include this in the news, but apparently numbers came out for Death Stranding on PC. Uh, and they said, yeah, we we made, I think it was like $23 billion. Um, like they, B? yeah, they made. With a B. Yeah, with a B. Woo. Um, I think it was with a B. I'm going to say that. <laughs> That's probably not. million. <laughs> well, because if it was billion with a B, that means Monster was probably an actual sponsor paying a lot of money per fucking unit or something. Well, let me let me see here. 
Death Stranding sales. It's it's live television. Live TV. Uh, was a sales success. Uh, I don't care about your cookies. So, while Tom out. reads, <laughs> I'm going to give another bit of news that wasn't on there. Um, RLCS Spring Regional 2. Um, the boys didn't get out of the group stage this time. So they tried. They opened up against version one, and it was a fucking good match. Yeah. Like, it really well. Good. They, lo- they ended up losing in um, the very, f- in a game five, but it was a really good match. Um, then went against Omelette. That one wasn't as great. It was okay, but wasn't as great. And then we dropped to KCP in day one. And then at that point, it was effectively like it wasn't happening. So it was a good effort. Proud of them. We got one more split this season. Let's see what they can do. I was very wrong. It's 27 million on PC. That sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> Huge difference. Because, like, to get 27 billion, you're talking like hundreds of millions of copies. Yeah. Yeah. I think like they sold closer million. to like 500,000 copies, didn't they? Uh, I don't know. Ish. But, but eh. basically, what this means is that they're really happy with how the game did. Um, it made back its money and then some. Uh, yeah, this is. This is fantastic. Uh, I really hope we're going to see more weird ass shit coming from Kojima. I like to see him go out on his own and it work. Yeah. It, it's very inspiring for some, like there's, there's probably all sorts of influential people inside the game industry. Like that have been head designers of games for 15, 20 years that we have no fucking clue about, mm. but they're afraid to leave because I mean, we need the dev house. This is a good fucking sign for some of them to say, hey, you know what? You don't need Bungie. You don't need Microsoft. You don't need XYZ. Start your own fucking studio. You know what you're doing. Get it right, and it'll work. But you have to get it right. Well, and and we, we we can't discount the fact that, you know, Death Stranding was not an indie game, right? It, it was an auteur game. It was made basically, you know, it was envisioned by a single person. Um, but they had the full backing of Sony. Like there, there was a lot of money put into that. So mm-hmm. it's not like you can just walk off and be like, fuck it. I'm an indie dev now. Uh, <laughs> like you gotta, you gotta find somebody to pay those bills. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying, like, if you're in the industry and you're a well-known person in that industry for the inside, like, you'll get, like, this show that you can get support from other publishers and not have to be beholden to a dev house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, good on them. It's good to see it happen. Did you hear that, yeah. Todd Howard? You can finally release the one game you've been meaning to release your entire life. Skyrim. <laughs> Again. <laughs> For Samsung Smart Fridge. <laughs> it's okay. It's going to get to the point where Skyrim is going to be playable on more devices than Doom. Because Doom was always a joke that eventually someday they'd have it playing on a fucking toaster. Yep. Because I know at one point, like, didn't they hack a, uh, I don't want to say hack, but inject it into a plane television to be able to play it on a plane? Yeah, and shit like that. They, they actually have gotten it running on a toaster. There's a couple of smart toasters that are running like small BSD or Linux kernels, and they've gotten Doom running on toasters. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> toaster Doom is best Doom. And uh, he said it couldn't happen on like a, <laughs> <laughs> a graphing calculator. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think somebody got it. Like there was a fancy pregnancy test with like an LCD screen <laughs> got it running on fire. <laughs> Uh, it's a demon <laughs> God, <damn>. congratulations <laughs> it's the uh, antichrist it's well, the I, I don't think we're topping that fellas um, so that said um, we do this every Saturday night 9pm Eastern 6pm Pacific time come check us out on our Twitch 72 PC or 72 pin connector on Twitch we have YouTube where we put these things up afterwards. It's 72 pin connector on YouTube. We have a Twitter, 72 PC underscore official. We put some shit up there. Most importantly, we have a website, 72 pin connector.com. We've got the merch that we talked about. We've got our Discord link because we got a lot of cool fucking people there. We have our podcast, RSS feeds, if you like to do old school tech shit like that. 
But all in all, that site directs you everywhere. Go there. It gets you places. That's all I got. You guys got any parting gifts outside of it's a demon? <laughs> uh, check out Disco Elysium if you're into weird shit. And if you want weird stuff but more action, check out Control. And check out Binding of Isaac because I like it and I said you should. And, and if you want to hate life and everyone else, come join me in Dota. Yeah, jo join anyway. me in Dota. Um, also, uh, Disco Elysium is 40 bucks. It's not even a $60 game, so... I honestly thought it was cheaper than that, even. I was wrong. Maybe I'll watch it play it through. Has, Maybe I'll be lazy. It has too many 10 out of 10s to be that cheap. <laughs> ah, okay. All right. I think, it's, I think it's all we got. So, till next week, y'all. Game on. Bye. Y'all. 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 Y'all.